Hey, hey developers, so today I'm gonna to talk to you about Vue.js and why you guys should learn it if you haven't already learned it already. And also we're gonna talk about Vue 3 and some new features and why it's the best version of Vue ever and it's the perfect time if you are a Vue newbie to jump in. And before we get started, I'm gonna give myself a shout out. I have a course called Vue 360. It's a comprehensive six week program. I'm opening it up again in a few weeks in September of 2020. But if you're interested, just go to course.viewcourse.tech. I'll put a link in the description and you can sign up and I'll let you know when the course is out. Yeah, so check that out at course.viewcourse.tech. So let's go ahead and talk about Vue.js. So I, if you don't know already and you're new to this channel, I am a huge Vue.js fan. And by the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure you go ahead and click that like button and click that subscribe button. Hey, it'll help the channel out and I really appreciate it. But anyways, if you don't know who I am, I actually wrote a book on Vue.js. I use a lot of Vue.js in my personal projects. So I'm, a, I'm just a huge fan. So I'm gonna tell you guys some of the reasons why you may wanna consider learning Vue.js today and also some of the cool new features of Vue 3, which I think make it even more worth learning today here in 2020 or whenever you watch this video for the first time. All right, so let's just start with the basics of why Vue.js. So, and uh, this is a really interesting topic because a lot of people ask me who are React developers or Angular developers or, or just use JavaScript, uh, anything other than Vue, like why should I use Vue? Like React is super popular. There's a lot of jobs out there for React. But the one, of the, the one thing that I've seen a lot is that Vue is still gaining a lot of momentum. There's still a lot of companies that are beginning to use Vue, a lot of companies that kind of switch from React to Vue or use Vue as another kind of technology in their stack of technologies. They may have some projects in React and some in Vue. And one of the really nice things about Vue is the onboarding experience for new developers is just awesome. It's really easy to get a new developer up and running in Vue. They don't have to know JSX, which is uh, in the React world, it's like you're combining your JavaScript and HTML and phone file. It's, it's they use really basic templates and really basic what are called directives inside your HTML and it just makes it just a really quick onboarding experience. And from everything I've seen and people who are learning to code for the first time, learning Vue is just a really easy on-ramp. And also, even if, you, even if you're creating more complex apps, it scales really well. So really, at the end of the day, you're just productive faster. And that is really important because uh, technologies come and go and when you get people and employees come and go and you wanna get someone up and running really quickly on a new code base, you'll find out that most of the time with Vue, they can get up and running really quickly because a lot of the concepts, even if they never used Vue before, are pretty simple to understand. It's also, I would say it's a little bit more less opinionated, or I should say um, it, it's opinionated in some things, like there is a Vue router. There is a one Vue router, that's the one that everyone should use, and that's pretty much it. There is also one state management system that, that Vue just really recommends. Um, there's other things that you can kind of mix and match, but what I mean by the opinionation is in some other frameworks that you, you actually have to kind of figure out what router you want to use or what state management system. There really isn't like a blessed version or idiomatic version that everyone recommends that you should use, and it kind of leads to this issue where you know there's just too many options. So I think in, in some ways Vue.js, I guess is more opinionated in some ways. In other ways, it's a little bit less opinionated. So I think it has a good balance between the two. Obviously, uh, since Vue can be incrementally ad adopted into any app or project, it's really easy to throw the Vue script tag into a project and then use whatever you want. So that's kind of what I mean by like a little bit less opinionated. And so that makes it really easy to and quickly to start. In fact, I've done this before. I've added Vue.js into a blank script file, add the router and Vuex, and basically had a mini app ready. And I didn't have a bundler or anything like that, but it was really simple, uh, super simple. There's also some really cool things coming out in the Vue ecosystem that make it even simpler to just create really quickly, really quick, really quickly qu uh, create Vue apps, excuse me. It's also no, not corporately backed. So unlike Facebook that really uh, controls a lot of React and 
and Google with Angular. It's not corporate backed. backed. It's basically backed by you and me and uh, Patreon and, and all the open source developers that are part of it. So I think that's really interesting. In fact, a few years ago, um, not to knock and react, there was like a big issue with their with the React license that they had. People thought that if you created a, an app with React, that Facebook would like somehow have some control over it. Of course, they got that they got rid of some of the wording behind all of that. And a lot of projects that weren't going to use React went to React after that. But just kind of interesting way because you are kind of supporting these larger companies. I'm, I'm a big fan of of Microsoft and Google and Facebook. I'm, I don't think that's a huge issue, but it is nice if, if that's important for you that you have a, a framework that's not uh, corporately backed. And also, uh, if you like to intermix your HTML and JavaScript, then you'll probably really like React, but Vue doesn't have that. It, it's uh, the kind of the idiomatic way to do it is using templates. Now you can deep dive in and create your view apps um, without templates using like render functions is what they're called. But for the most part, it's just a lot simpler to use just templates. And that's what almost 99% of the apps out there use. So that's some of the reasons that I really like Vue. And, and so let's go on to what Vue 3 brings and why I think that this is a perfect time for you guys to check out Vue. So, so uh, as of this recording, the release candidate out is for Vue 3. It's very, very close to being fully released. Maybe by the time this video is out, it will be fully released, but it's very close. And some of the kind of the key features of Vue 3 that you guys should be uh, looking for, looking out for is it's really smaller, it's faster. The the dev team, the core team for Vue.js has really done, outdone themselves and just making a tighter, better, smaller bundle, just a faster amount of features a faster core system. It has improved TypeScript support and it has this really cool composition API. I like to call that out as well and we'll get into that in a second. So like a couple of the new features that it has, it has this portal system, allows you to display blocks of code anywhere in the app. So for example here, we have this template and we have this ID portal target. And then in this one, um, you can, you do portal target portal dash target and you can put text in here. So it's really a way to like transport text from one place to the other. Um, it's it's really simple. I know, uh, I think in other frameworks, sometimes they call it like black holes. <laughs> sometimes it's called portals. And there are third party plugins that allow you to do this in other frameworks. But I th think it's nice that it's just kind of built in here because you do find out when you start creating more complicated apps that you want to kind of move information from one place to the other. Uh, multiple root nodes is a nice new feature of Vue 3. In the past, you kind of had to have one simple root node in the middle. Like for example, this template here, I'd only have one. If I had two, I would get an error. It's nice now you can kind of create your templates a little bit differently and you're not going to have that issue anymore. There's also multiple V models. So if you're brand new to Vue and you don't know any of these terms, don't worry. This just me. I'm going to give you uh, some advice that these are just really nice features that have made Vue even better. So now you can have multiple V models and this allows you to do like two way data binding in between like a parent component and a child component. So let's say this info component was a child component to your parent one. Now you can feed in these name, email, location, date. And so that way, if anything changes with inside these components, it's basically synced up to the parent component, which is really nice when you're passing things down from one component to the other. There's this, uh, we still have the options API and this is kind of the bread and butter and what makes Vue really easy to use as of today. And this is not going away. So it's really easy to like create a Vue app. You just do this new view here. You put a template at the top and a script tag. And then you can add in your, like here's like a typical Vue app. You have a data object. You have this computed properties, you have methods. Uh, and then you have all this, this new kind of API too. So if you want to kind of expand and try to construct your app a little bit better, you now have the option of creating a composition API and it's almost like you're organizing your code per feature. So if you have lots of different um, components, you can kind of pull stuff, different features out of those different components and make, um, you can even pull them into their own files that can be imported into your composition API. Uh, it's sort of like a step up from what we call mixins before. 
So it helps with code reorganization, logic reuse, TypeScript support, no namespace collision, performance, and it has, um, you can actually easier with multiple teams. And um, there is some disadvantages too. So if you're in a really simple, smaller app and you have a beginner team, maybe you don't wanna use Composition API right away and that's fine because it does have a little bit of a learning curve. There's no shared uh, template and you don't need, so um, I would say you don't need to rewrite all your apps. This isn't like going from hooks in the React world. If you know what that is, there was a big hubbub when hooks came out that all the apps need to be rewritten with hooks and I think many of them were. This is not one of those stances because you can easily use the old composition or options API or the composition API, but it's really nice that Vue's given this option to have this kind of cleaner, slicker UI to use in our Vue apps. Uh, one other thing to mention is suspense. So it's like render fallbacks content instead of component until condition is met. met. So you can have the suspense, you put basically this built-in component almost, and you can have it uh, work if the content, um, some kind of condition is met or not. And this is perfect for like asynchronous components. So if you're looking for like a backend call, you can have a, like a loading spinner run. And then when that is done, it could show some information on the page, but if it fails, it shows different information. It's kind of a nice, unique way inside Vue.js to, to put this data in there. Uh, there is also some deprecations. They got rid of some things like uh, filters are removed. And there's quite a few of other little things that have been removed, but I just wanted to mention one of them here. And also uh, just to give an update, if you want to upgrade, I think it's a great time to upgrade. So if you are uh, familiar with Vue, I, I, mean, I, I don't think there's any reason why not to upgrade. I think they've been really testing it a lot, different upgrade paths, and it's been pretty successful. So you get massive performance improvements, updates to rendering engine, better reusability and new features. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, it's a little over 12 minutes now. I've been uh, rambling on here. So if you made it all the way in, I really appreciate it. Make sure you check that, that course, that view course tech in the description, sign up. I'll be releasing more information about that course as I get closer to it. It is gonna be a little bit more of an expensive course. I'll just say it right now. It's not gonna be a cheap $10 Udemy course. We're, it's gonna be a fully interactive class. I'm really excited about it. That's gonna be released hopefully uh, early mid-September. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it. I appreciate it. Thanks.